Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a new feature in 2020.4 where Tableau have added the ability to extend the date axis range beyond the current values that are actually available in the data set. Now, a caveat before I hop into the video, this only works in certain scenarios, in particular, when you're using predictive modeling functions, table calculations like moving average and running totals, and then lastly, R and Python functions, where of course you might be doing some modeling where you want to look into the future. So those are the only instances that it works, but let's hop into Tableau and let me show you how that works. Okay, I'm gonna open up sample Superstore sales here and we're going to just use this as a basic data set. I'm gonna start by drawing a chart very simply by dragging sales onto rows and then order date onto columns. Of course, by default, it drags a discrete year, discrete being signaled by the color blue here. And then if I click the drop down, I can make it a continuous month. Continuous months give us a nice timeline to work with, okay? So now we have this, uh, the chart set up and um, we can actually start to play around with this. Now, if you're not aware in 2020.3, they actually introduced some of the groundwork for this feature, which is they added the ability to do things like infer missing values, essentially uh, look at missing values and essentially read beyond them or look at the pattern uh, either side of that missing value and sort of extrapolate them if that makes sense. I'm absolutely maligning that statistical definition, but I'm trying to keep this video as simple as I possibly can. Um, and so if I actually go into the month order date, you can actually see that the show future values feature is now there, okay? And you can see that you've got different time ranges, including a custom option, okay? Now, if I just go ahead and say one year, you'll see that nothing happens, nothing changes because it's not a supported calculation that we're using. We're just looking at sales here. It's not a running total. It's not an average and it's not a, a predictive modeling function. I definitely haven't uh, typed anything in front of you. So, so let's go ahead and change this to a moving average. And I'm gonna use a quick table calculation here to select moving average. And when I do that, you'll see that the chart changes. And the key thing to note here is that it also goes into the future. Specifically, it goes into February, 2021 but it also shares that we have 10 nulls, okay? And if I click on that, I can show the date at the default position and you can see that it draws the line into the future. So it is it is technically there, but it's not there because essentially there are nulls there. And in this particular case, it's, it's difficult for a Tableau to do anything because that moving average needs the values there. If, um, if you just have the 10 nulls and you said, you know, plot them at zero, that doesn't work. And if you filter the data, well, you're not extending the date axis range. So in this instance, Whilst we've extended the dates out, it's not quite making as much sense. Uh, it will make more sense when we come to the predictive modeling functions in a second. But I want to show you one last thing. Notice that it says 10 nulls, and yet we extended it by a year. Well, that's because there's a difference between the uh, table calculation that I'm using and the time frame that we've extended. You see, we've extended it by a year, which is 12 months. And the moving uh, average is actually looking back at the previous two months. And so that, that makes up for the deficit, essentially. It says 10 nulls. If you add the two that this calculation looks at, that makes 12. And the reason is, is that the moving average is always looking back at the previous two values. So it takes two sets of values to fall to a point where there is no longer any data. If I was to change this to 12, and set it to zero, you'll see that the nulls disappear here on the bottom right, and now it's able to compute. But now our moving average is looking at such a broad time frame that it doesn't really make sense in the context of what I'm analyzing, especially at a monthly level. And so we're kind of skewing that. Maybe three months might work better, um, but in this case, you know, it just doesn't work that well. And you can see now that I've typed three, it's uh, the deficit is now nine. So it works exactly as you'd expect. You just need to bear that in mind as you're working with this. So let me uh, set this back to two as, as it was in the default, and then we can just close this and leave it at that. Now, to show you the next use case, which is actually the one that makes the most sense, um, I'm going to reset this chart a little bit. I'm gonna to go to sales and I'm going to uh, clear this table calculation. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna go back to show future values and I'm gonna select none because in the next option, we're gonna choose a custom value, okay? Let's switch over to the predictive modeling example. Okay, now we're going to look at the predictive modeling options. And um, I have to sort of preface this, which is um, predictive modeling in Tableau is one of those things where you can never really make everyone happy. You've got the quants who want to know all the detail and Tableau doesn't give it to them. And then you have the people who you know aren't quants who use the functions, but then aren't quite happy because they can't describe what's going on in the background. And so whenever you're working with predictive modeling, I always urge you to just spend a little bit more time actually investing your investing into your understanding of the predictive model because if you try and simplify the terminology around it actually some of the analysis you can do is actually quite simple but still effective 
So the predictive model I'm actually going to be using today is called the quantile. If I set a quantile of 0.5, essentially what that says is that the model predicts that values will essentially fall uh, above or below this number. So at 0.5, that's a median. So you'd expect an equal spread above and below. If I set it to say 0.9, then I would expect 90% of my values to fall below the line. And if I set the quantile to one, then I'd expect all values to fall below the line, okay? So that's essentially what I'm using today. Now. To create this calculation, I'm going to go ahead and create calculated field here, and I'm just going to type something so that I can see how big the text is and just scale this up so it's nice and easy to see. Now, the modeling function is actually quite easy to find. If you were just to type model, you'll see them come up, and I'm using the quantile as an example here. I'll leave a link in the description to Tableau's uh, documentation on choosing the right predictive model and what they do and also the new predictive models that are available. So let's hit model quantile here and you'll see that it gives us um, the function essentially. And if we click our mouse into that, you see that you get two descriptions, okay? Now we're gonna just focus on this first description. In another video, I'll touch on the new models that are available. And so check out that video or come up in the tooltip above at the moment. So here it's basically asking what quantile. So for this, I'm just gonna type in 0 0.5. Then I'm going to hit a comma. Sorry, I'm looking around the microphone here because it's right in front of my keyboard. Um, then the target expression is essentially the sum of cells, the thing I'm trying to compute. So I'm going to hold command and I'm going to drag that in. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to avoid making mistakes. Okay, the next step is the predictor expression. If I hit a comma, you'll see it moves to the next value here. And the predictor expression is essentially going to be the date in this instance because it's basically trying to see, look, um, in the coming months, what is the sum of cells going to be? That's sort of the simplest way to think of it. So I'm going to drag the order date in here, okay? And notice when I do that, it actually drags a date truncation function in there. If I wasn't to do that and we just went ahead and did a normal order date, you'd get a very different response because what would happen is Tableau would be doing the model at the day level because the order dates are all at the day level of aggregation, right? They're not actually at the month level. And so when we summarize this up to the month, which is what Tableau is doing in the background, it's doing something slightly different. So what we actually specifically need is the month. So we have to use the date truncation function here. So the way I do this, is I just hold command or control on the Windows machine and drop it in and Tableau brings a function for us because it understands that that's what has to happen to get the month from the order date. Now, if I look at this, um, I'm already getting an error here and it says it cannot mix aggregate and non-aggregate arguments with this function. And in old school terms, if you've used Tableau for a while, you'd know how to fix this. Essentially, you just need to turn this month into an attribute because what it's essentially doing is returning a piece of piece of text and in order to be able to aggregate text, it's got to become an attribute. That's the best way to think of it. So. I just type in ATTR and it will do that essentially. And of course it goes and gets rid of my date truncation, which is not what I wanted. So if I just undo that, you'll see that it returns the ATTR and I can open up a brackets there. And I now need to put a brackets at the very end. And it looks like we have our model working, okay? The calculation is valid and everything's correct. I'll show you what happens if we didn't date truncate, okay? So let's go call this calc one, hit apply, and we're pretty much good to go. Now, if I drag calc Calc 1 onto the canvas with everything open, you can actually see that that model is now working really, really nicely. And okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this small and just move it to the bottom left here. Um, good old modal windows and Tableau. So I can actually leave this running here in the bottom left and we can do some work to this. So we can actually make this a dual axis chart and we're going to synchronize the axis. And you can see that it's essentially doing what we asked for. This is essentially the median value. And if you sort of squint your eyes, as I like to do sometimes with predictive functions, you can just see that that is generally roughly the center of the whole data set as that sort of line goes up. It's doing a good job of sort of showing that and reflecting that. And so there we have it. Now, to get back to the purpose of this predictive model, we have to add uh, some values to the date axis range. So let's go ahead and click OK. Uh, we're going to hide this particular header because we don't need it anymore. We have the differences between the blue line and we're just going to hide that there and leave it at that. Now, if I go into analysis, you'll see that infer properties from missing values is actually ticked. So this is a, actually quite an important thing to have ticked because now if I go to the order date and I show future values and then I go to one year, you can see that the model goes well into the future. Okay, What would happen if we didn't have that infer missing values option ticked? Let's go ahead to analysis and untick that. And you see it just draws a flat line. So essentially what Tableau is doing is it gets to that point. 
It is actually extending the data out, which is why you actually have data points here, but it's stopping flat because it hasn't got any new information to infer anything from. If we tick the analysis and then select infer properties from missing values, it takes the most recent set of values and just extrapolates that line all the way through, okay? And essentially that starts to work really, really well. Well, we could argue whether that's the right model or not. We can come to that point in another video maybe, but essentially you can now see that this date axis range extension is working as expected. How far can you push it? Well, that's where the custom option goes. So if you go to show future values here, then you go to custom, you can now play around with this toggle and you can keep going until you're basically happy. But at this point, you're using a very small subset of data and it's just doing an exponential curve essentially. And that's what's driving this behavior. You can see that behavior very, very clearly, okay? So it's not really realistic. So you've got to, you still got to apply some common sense to this. Uh, don't be choosing a year when you don't have a year's worth of sort of data to work from. I think in this particular case, I think months would make a lot more sense. And if we were maybe choosing three or four months, that's a much, much better sort of, uh, medium point to be settled with. And if we were to just, if we just right click on this and select show filter, we actually see the filters here just below my face. And now if I play with these filters, you'll see that it's always gonna look ahead three months, however I move this. So we can kind of go back here. Let's just go back a few months and there you go. It's always looking ahead three months. And as, as the date range gets smaller, you can see that this line gets like more and more vague. It's kind of not really a good idea. And eventually, this isn't gonna work because there's not enough data in there for it to work. So uh, just bear that in mind. If I just click close and I just expand that back out, you'll see that it starts working again. And at this point, the last three values actually get it going downward. So this, if you're using this, you'd, you'd know this is a not a good model because if there's seasonality in your business and then there's not enough data, this is what's going to happen. So you really still have to apply a lot of common sense to these and you really have to start to think how they work with your data set. But you can see here, the main feature here is that the date axis range is working as expected and you need to make sure that you have that feature here to infer properties from missing values ticked. Otherwise, you're gonna get a flat line in your predictive model and it's not going to work. Okay, so this has been a long video. I apologize. It's a weird sort of mix of topics to explain. Um, but in order to show the real sort of full use case of date axis ranges being extended, um, the video is absolutely necessary sort of to cover predictive models because that's actually a good use case. You could also use predictive models in R and Python instead. Um, and again, this would apply the same. With uh, running totals and moving average, what might help there is uh, when you're trying to get sort of when you're trying to solve weird complex situations where your moving average is stopping not quite where you'd like it, or you'd like to do something slightly different, or maybe you are actually missing values in sort of your calculation and you don't want sort of some weird behavior there, that is a slightly different use case. Maybe worth doing a video on that at some other point. But just to keep this video focused on the new feature, that's pretty much it. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do. If you haven't, hit the dislike button twice and send it to someone you don't like. I'll catch you in the next video.